G'day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back. Alright, Thursday here in Australia, we're back over that $1.5 trillion mark and slowly sort of creeping up, but we have kind of stalled again. And there is something in the market that has me a little bit worried and I'll get to that in just a second. But we can have a look. So 50,000, we got up close to 51,000 uh, and then it rolled back over and we really need to break that kind of $52,000 mark. And at the moment, we're just not doing it. Likewise, Ethereum got up to, I think, around about sort of 16, 1700-ish, around about there and has rolled over and we can see just in the last hour, there's some red coming in. Now, the hourly obviously changes every hour, so this doesn't mean anything. But also, you can have a look uh, in the 24 hour, which is a bit of an indication. Look, there's a mixture of sort of red and green there. Now, things definitely have gone up. Let's have a look. What's really pumped in the last 24 hours? All right, Engine Coin, they've got some great news coming up. We'll have a look at a story about that very shortly. So, well done to Engine. Uh, look, these are some pretty big sort of gains. Again, big double digit gains. V Chain doing extremely well. Bancor. Cosmos, Ontology, look, these are all really good gains. And you can see over the last seven days, I mean, Engine, look, it's up, you know, massively at the moment, but it is having a little bit of a sell-off right now. All right, so what we can do here is have a look. What's dumped? Has anything really dumped in the last 24 hours? It's funny how things change so quickly. We were bearish only a few days ago, and now everyone's bullish again, and we'll probably be bearish in the next few days as well. There's a lot of indecision in the market at the moment. We can't get back to those old time, old all time highs, uh, but we're not reaching like you know unprecedented lows at the moment. So we're kind of in a ranging sort of motion. Right, what's dumped? Pretty much nothing. There we go. You know, Polygon's down, you know, 5%, but it's up 40% basically for the seven days. Again, these are all single digit losses. So no real kind of major losses, you could say, but there were some pretty big gains. All right, now I'm going to show you why I am somewhat worried. This is what has me worried at the moment. So the fear and greed index, we are up uh, fairly high, like, you know, in the 80s. So I am expecting we're going to have a flash crash. And it might even come in the next sort of few hours. It might already be starting or it might come over the weekend. Uh, and that's just where I am at the moment. I really do think we're going to have a flash crash. It's going to shake out all the weak hands. It's going to liquidate all the longs because a lot of people are likely going long at the moment. And I think it will be, will be a flash crash. I think Bitcoin uh, is likely going to flash crash down to somewhere between maybe 38,000 to 41,000. And again, I do think we will have a candle close around that kind of $42,000 mark. And then I think we start to slowly but surely make our way back up again. But I don't think it's going to be explosive growth coming up. Now, I gotta say, as I always do in every video, none of this is financial advice. I am not a financial advisor. I could be, uh, <coughs> excuse me, I could be proven completely wrong. I just get the feeling like that's what's gonna happen. We were over here just a few days ago and then we've quickly kind of thrown up to here. And so again, it's a lot of volatility. And generally, when things like this happen, there is a big move that comes. I just suspect it'll likely be to the downside. I could be completely wrong though, but that's what I'm watching out for. All right, let's have a look at the Bitcoin chart. So again, we can see we had this kind of move, but it didn't really kind of break some of these, you know, old, you know, marks that we were really looking for. It wicked up and now look where we are. This is an indecision candle and have a look at that. I mean, it's only early, you know, it's only 22 minutes into the brand new day. But at the moment, it's just kind of indecision. We don't really know what's going to happen. And again, I called a dead cat bounce a long time ago. So it rolled down. We got a bit of a bounce, rolled down again. We've got a bit of a bounce. It looks up, but it's completely possible that, again, this rolls back down. Now, again, I am thinking that we're going to wick to somewhere sort of down around about sort of here. It wouldn't surprise me if we see one of these kind of big wicks but I do think we will sort of close around about this mark. I think we're going to have a candle that will close around about there. Now, again, I've been wrong before. I'll be wrong again. No one knows everything. It's just what I'm feeling at the moment. I think it's all still a little bit too exuberant. Uh, you know, charts, again, they're super bullish. 
uh, and it's we're just not ready to be that bullish again. I think we're going to have to shake out some weaker hands. So for me, again, I've got my money sitting on the side. I still dollar cost average into the alts because they're a little bit harder uh, to sort of pick. Uh, and even if there is some big downside, the upside's still going to be massive in my opinion. But I haven't been dollar cost averaging into Ethereum or Bitcoin for quite some time. I'm waiting for a good pullback. And again, $42,000 is the mark for me. That's where I'll buy Bitcoin. Uh, Ethereum, I'm probably happy to buy it around about the 1200 or under. And as I said in other videos, if it doesn't happen and I'm wrong and it doesn't go down there, then it doesn't matter because it means it's going up anyway. So either way, uh, I'm not too worried. If I'm going to buy back into those, I'm going to buy into them at the prices where I think is a good entry point. Uh, and if they don't come down to there and they keep going up, then I've still got plenty of skin in the game. <laughs> and so I'm not losing, I'm still winning. That's what I'm doing. All right, let's move on to some stories. Tim Draper believes that Netflix is the big company to buy Bitcoin. He also said that Amazon could start accepting Bitcoin. Amazon absolutely will start accepting Bitcoin. Everywhere is going to do it. If PayPal are doing it, um, you know, Square Cash App, it's it's inevitable. It's going to happen. Visa, uh, Mastercard, all of that are moving into it, and Amazon is uh, changing. You know, the person who's running it. Uh, Bezos is stepping down later this year and the guy that's uh, taking over, I can't remember his name, but he was basically the one that was introducing all this Web 3.0 stuff to Amazon and he's going to be the big boss. So I think one of the first things he's going to do, if it doesn't happen before that, is say we're now going to accept Bitcoin and you know Litecoin. I'm not saying it's going to be Litecoin, but cryptocurrencies, whatever ones they go for, and it'll likely be the same ones that you know PayPal, MasterCard and all that are accepting. So in my opinion, it will be Bitcoin, Ethereum, Litecoin, and then I'm not sure what others, but I think those three uh, are, are pretty much a shoe in All right, billionaire hedge fund manager and a former CFTC chairman reportedly invested in crypto firm. This is showing that the old guard is now moving into the new guard. So some of the old guard, not the really, really old guard, like you can forget about uh, Warren Buffett and things like that, they're probably never going to come over to crypto. But some of the, you know, who would still be considered the old guard, but they're not that old, can see what's coming. So Christopher Giancarlo, the former CFTC chairman, also known as Crypto Dad, and the billionaire hedge fund manager Mark La uh, Lazary have reportedly invested an undisclosed amount in the cryptocurrency and blockchain investment company, Block Tower Capital. Some of the, again, they these guys would still be considered a bit of the old guard. They can see what's coming. They're making moves. They're getting in nice and early. I mean, they could have been earlier. You know, they could have come in, you know, 10 years ago when Bitcoin was, you know, like a dollar. But not everyone can be that lucky. But they can see what's coming. And so they're moving into the firms as opposed to just simply holding you know, the cryptocurrencies themselves. And that's great. Don't get me wrong. Holding the currencies themselves has plenty of upside. But these kind of firms, they still make money when crypto is going down. So that's the things we need to think about. While holding the actual asset itself, yes, is really, really good. But they don't do a whole lot for you in a bear market. You lose a whole lot. Whereas companies, you know, that are kind of the backbone of the, well, not, not to switch the backbone of the asset, but, you know, uh, the backbone of what surrounds the assets, they make money whether it's going up or down. So these are things that I am looking to get into when I'm getting back into stocks, is I'm gonna buy stocks and things that are based around crypto because they will make money on the upside and they'll make money on the downside. But it's still no different to investing in anything. Not all of these are gonna last and not all of these are gonna be around forever and do well. So that is some of the things that I'm looking for when I get back into the stock market. All right, Cardano. Retail investors appear to have flooded the third biggest cryptocurrency by market cap, Cardano's ADA. Google searches have skyrocketed to new highs in the past few weeks, coinciding with the latest price uh, recorded for the ADA token. Now it has started to come back down. Let's go back over here. So there we can see it has been slowly coming down. It was up to nearly a dollar thirty, so now we're down to a dollar twenty, and we'll have to wait and see whether there's going to be a further sell-off or not. But you know, 
it shows that Cardano, that's why it was doing so well. Google searches were going through the roof. You know, it was being pumped on YouTube, pumped on Twitter and things like that. And now the general public have got in. So, you know, likely they've gotten in around about a dollar thirty, uh, and this will probably retrace all the way to around about a dollar. It'll shake them out, and then it'll start to make its way back up. Now, again, I'm not saying that's what's going to happen. I just wouldn't be surprised if that does. If that is what happens, that's unfortunately the way it works. Uh, dumb money is what they call you know people who are new to the space and it's not that they're dumb that's not a nice way to say it but they just aren't experienced so it should be called inexperienced money and i guess you know some people just like to be you know negative and call it the dumb money but that's all it is it's not people who are dumb it's just people who are new to the space and don't really understand and probably don't yeah look at charts and all the rest of it and look i've made those mistakes and i will continue to make those mistakes as well sometimes that's just the way it is but more often than not, I make sure I'm checking charts and things like that and I'm getting in at a good price. But charts aren't always 100% accurate. It might look like, yep, yeah, this is a bad time to get in because it's probably going to dump and so you don't get in. And unfortunately, you never see those prices again because it's at the start of a really big peak and the next retracement won't be anywhere near uh, at the price of what it is now. So yeah, you got to, again, do your own research. All right, Canadian firm planning to convert its Bitcoin trust to an ETF. All right, well, we know there's some Bitcoin ETFs out there already. Less than two months after launching trading for shares of its Bitcoin trust, uh, Canada-based investment manager Nine Point Partners is planning to change its offering to an exchange-traded fund. In an announcement on March 3rd, Nine Point said it would be holding a vote for... Uh, a vote for unit holders to decide on whether to convert its existing Bitcoin trusts to an exchange traded fund or ETF on the Toronto Stock Exchange. The firm said the move is intended to provide a better trading price and increase trading liquidity. Investors will be able to vote on the matter on uh, 19th of April. So it's all slowly starting to happen. Bitcoin ETFs, Ethereum ETFs and there's going to be more ETFs coming, you know, expect there to be one for ADA in the future and, you know, Polkadot and all sorts of things. This is the change. It's, you know, trickle, 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 flood. Now, some of this trickle has taken a really long time, particularly for Bitcoin. It's taken, you know, the best part of, you know, 11 sort of 12 years for us to get to here. But now it is really starting to move. And that is why I think long term Bitcoin has a long way to go. But I'm just not sure if that big true mass adoption will happen this cycle anymore. We're kind of running out of time. We still could see a super cycle. It's possible. I just think, you know, and again, my opinion changes regularly, as does everyone's. That's just the way it is. I think the institutions are going to try and really shake the, you know the weak hands out in this bull run once they get it to a certain point and they're just going to short the absolute backside out of it to get everyone really scared so they can literally buy up as much as they can for the next bull run and again my opinion may change tomorrow but that's just something i'm starting to think about that that's probably what's going to happen now the institutions are here they want to get as much as they can so they're really going to try and yeah, shake the tree as hard as they can uh, and grab everything that falls. So that is what I'm watching out for. I've decided that, you know, the Bitcoin that I currently have, I'm not going to sell. I got it at a really good price. I don't think it's ever going to go down to that price. Uh, and again, I have my Bitcoin working for me. So I've got my BlockFi account and I'll be looking for other ways. You know, once uh, I get my Avado, so I'll be staking my Ethereum uh, in the Ethereum 2.0, but I also have Ethereum on uh, block fine. I'll just be looking for other things like that. Celsius network and all sorts of things like that. I'll be looking for ways to make my crypto work for me. So I'm a Bitcoin. Uh, I already have sold some. I sold 10% of it. So I got some cash. I don't think I'll sell any more on my Bitcoin. Uh, and the good thing about BlockFi is they can pay you the interest in whatever you like. So I've got uh, my interest being paid back to me in all the things that I am uh, that I have in there. So I have some Bitcoin in there. I have some Ethereum in there. As of yesterday, I put some uh, Chainlink in there. I've got some Litecoin in there and I have some USDC in there. So I have BlockFi paying me uh, the interest in all of the above. So that's what I really like about BlockFi. All right, let's move on to the next story. 
Brave acquires search engine in bid to offer alternative to Google search. Privacy focused privacy focused bra browser Brave has acquired open open search engine Telecat to introduce to its own, own alternative to Google search later this year. According to the announcement, Telecat will serve as a foundation for the upcoming Brave Search, an inbuilt search engine designed to enable private and transparent web serving. So I really like Brave. You know, they had a couple of issues early on where they were redirecting, oh, what was it? I think links of, you know, people, well, they were putting their own links when people were uh, clicking on links, you know, to go to certain stuff. So they were reaping the benefits for it. And, and you know, look, I, I can't blame them. I don't really have any major issues with it, but it probably should have been something out there that was public knowledge. Like, you know, when you click on BlockFi, for instance, you're using the Brave uh, browser uh, link, so they're going to get a little bit for it. And again, I don't really have any major issues with it, but it just should have been made public knowledge. All right, so BitMEX. Been a lot of issues around BitMEX. Now we have BitMEX CEO Arthur Hayes is negotiating his surrender to US authorities. So according to court documents shared with cryptocurrency publication The Block, BitMEX CEO Arthur Hayes could surrender to US authorities in Hawaii next month. Hayes and BitMEX co-founders Greg Dwyer and Ben Delio, as well as head of business development Greg Dwyer, were charged in October with willfully failing to establish, implement and maintain an adequate anti-money laundering program for the cryptocurrency derivatives exchange. So this has been going on for quite a while. I think a couple of them have been arrested, uh, if I am not mistaken. Uh, and Arthur Hayes is still yeah, at large, as they say. And he probably knows it can't last forever. At some stage, he's going to have to hand himself in. So he figures, all right, now's the time to do it. All right. NFTs, again, they just keep exploding. Now, for me, I'm not buying any NFTs. I just don't know enough about art in general. And look, I could live to regret that. But at the moment, yeah, I'm just staying away from it. I, 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 as I spoke yesterday, uh, I don't know enough about art in general. But what I am doing is investing uh, in the platforms behind it. But here we go. Uh, Kings of Leon, they are going to sell a new album as an ETF. Uh, sorry, as an ETF, as an NFT. So the NFT space just continues to grow and grow and grow. What I am concerned about is that we're getting closer to the end of this bull run. Oh, don't get me wrong, I still think we've got a number of months to go. But I do think once the next bear market happens, it's quite possible that a lot of these NFTs uh, lose a, a lot of value because they're coming out, out so late in the cycle. And I just think maybe you know there'll be a better time to buy them in the next bear market things will come down in price but again i could be wrong and the the art itself probably won't suffer the same fate as the actual crypto itself but again i, I just don't know about enough it's enough of it uh, but art in general and nfts but that's why i'm not buying any but those avogotchi ones sounded kind of cool because they were linked back to uh, Aave, and that's where some of those things might be going and they're the ones that i'm somewhat interested in all right, speaking of things that are kind of based around NFTs, well, sorry, so Engine. This is what I have invested in. Engine to tackle soaring gas fees, scaling with new blockchain products. So against the backdrop of soaring gas fees on the Ethereum network, blockchain platform Engine is looking to tackle issues of scaling and interoperability. According to a press release shared with Coindesk on Wednesday, the platform will be releasing two new offerings it claims will redefine the non-fungible token market. Dubbed uh, JumpNet and Affinity, the company says its two blockchain solutions will increase support for NFTs while removing Ethereum's gas, expensive gas fees from the equation altogether. So I have a bag of Engine, uh, and look, I may buy some more Engine. Again, this is the thing... Uh, that I want to invest in. So again, Engine is one. Uh, I may have to have a look into Wax. I haven't got any of it. There's a number of others, but particularly uh, the things that it's based on. So Ethereum, still invested in Ethereum, uh, not buying any more at the moment. I'll be waiting for the prices to go lower before I buy some because I've, I've already built my bag. And that is where I see uh, the value uh, for those who aren't 
all that artsy and don't really understand the art itself is invest in the things that they're based on uh, and engine will be one of them in my opinion all right last but not least so citigroup now this is what they've had to say now they're an extremely big bank bitcoin is at a tipping point could become preferred currency for international trade i think in the future uh, that's a definite possibility i just don't know about that though exactly I don't see too many people transacting in Bitcoin. I really do see it as the store of wealth. They'll transact in something else. Why would you want to transact in Bitcoin? Say you, you know, buy a hundred thousand dollars worth of something and you use Bitcoin today. Yep, in a year's time that could go down to thirty thousand dollars or even lower. Absolutely. But then in five to ten years' time, that hundred thousand could be worth, you know, a million or ten million or who knows what. That's what makes me think, I don't think big currency will be used uh, as a way to trade. It literally will just be the store of value until it kind of gets to a point where it's leveled off. While there's still major volatility, I just don't see it happening. I don't think anyone will be using Bitcoin for that. But let's have a look. Citigroup says Bitcoin is at a tipping point and the cryptocurrency could become the currency of choice for international trade. Not sure about that, but hey, look, I could be wrong. The firm wrote in a report that we could be at the start of a massive transformation of cryptocurrency into the mainstream. That I completely do agree with. And I do think there will be other cryptocurrencies that will be used for trade. The store of value is where Bitcoin is at. And I think that's what people will do. They will store their value in Bitcoin because it should always appreciate. You know, there will obviously be times where it goes down because it's got a fixed supply. Long term, it should only ever go up. Unless, again, there's something you know in the code that just hasn't been found or quantum computers can all of a sudden crack it. But I know there are people already working uh, how to secure and safeguard Bitcoin. And there was some MIT guys uh, specifically that were doing that. And I brought you that story a couple of weeks ago. So I really don't think that's something we need to worry about. But... I do think cryptocurrencies, I mean, it's already happening. The mainstream, it's already right there. Again, PayPal, uh, Square Cash App, MasterCard, Visa, you name it, they're all getting on board. So it is the transformation, and it's not we could be at the start of. It is we are at the start of a massive transformation of cryptocurrency into the mainstream. Again, I'm just not sure the true mass, like worldwide adoption, like where you know pretty much everybody is using it, is going to happen this run. I think we might not see that. Again, the institutions they absolutely are getting into it, and they that, that's that's what this will be based around. This is going to be the institution bull run, and I think the next bull run will be then when yeah the rest of the world, i.e you know regular people really start to get into cryptocurrency and i'm not saying that there's none here now there is there's a a large retail section here but it's just large for the small market that we have it's not large as in the entire world is now getting onto crypto we're still maybe a decade away from that we'll have to wait and see if it doesn't happen this cycle and we don't go into this super cycle that we could then yeah, the mass adoption won't happen. I think the mass adoption will be another cycle or two away if Bitcoin and cryptocurrency sticks to its kind of four-year cycle. That's my personal opinion. Love to know your thoughts down below. You know, do you think we get the mass worldwide adoption where everybody is going to be using cryptocurrencies this cycle or are we still a few cycles away? Like maybe, you know, we get sort of a third of you know the population in the next cycle and then after that it really does move into basically everyone is just using it love to know your thoughts down below let me know all right that's it from me stay safe be kind to one another it's pretty good on the gain train at the moment but will it last that is the question i'll see you next time